So now, my best performing video is of this breadboard power supply right there. So uh, we're going to do kind of a quick uh, refresher. But in case you give it power, a higher voltage to this barrel plug, that's how it's intended. And you can output uh, 5 volts or 3.3 volts. Now it has voltage regulators. They don't actually convert that higher voltage into more current out. They just kind of add like resistance basically to drop some of the voltage. Always be aware of that they create a lot of heat. So you don't want to give too much voltage in. Um, I think you can go up to about 12 volts. Always look at the specs. Uh, but the more voltage you put in, the hotter it's going to get. So 9 volts, maybe even 7 volts. Uh, works really well. But in uh, any case, it's got pins to go into the breadboard. Uh, so it's a breadboard power supply. Plugs in there. But here you can see there's a USB. So um, this is intended for outputting uh, power. But we're going to look at using it as the input of power. So you would not plug it in to uh, the uh, barrel plug right there if you're going to use USB to power it. So again, we'll come to that later. Uh, for those new to uh, these breadboard uh, power supplies, you can also uh, make it so there's no output power on one rail or the other. You can do 5 volts there and a 3.3 or 0 volts there and uh, so on. It does have an on off switch, something to be aware of if it looks like it is not working. So I'm going to plug that into the board right there and I have a AC to DC wall adapter right here so we got that and uh, there you can see where it plugs into I have an extension cord that will plug it into but uh, yeah inputs 100 to 240 volts and outputs 9 volts up to 1 amp of current right there and uh, we want to keep this below I believe half of an amp I think you can damage it any higher than that so I'm going to kind of push that out of the way right there here's the other end right there so somebody got mad at me one time because uh I didn't show that adapter, so it may be the uh, the main video that I did where they got mad at me for that. And uh, there you go, uh, it's on, and the LED is on right there. So sometimes the light is uh, hitting the LED where it looks like it's on, even when it's off right there. That's another thing. Every once in a while, people get annoyed with. There's a little mirror on the LED that uh, helps uh, direct the light out that it creates. So yeah, we got the on off switch. Now, a lot of people are really interested in using a USB to uh, power it. So um, this is it for the demonstration with the uh, power supply right there. I'll unplug it and we'll get on to the next part. So now we're gonna kinda detour. This is how I would actually power stuff if I wanna use a USB uh, power supply right there. So we got the plug in there. Other side is the alligator clips. Now the LED will probably turn on when I connect this. This is whether I um, do this directly like we see here or if I use the uh, power supply that I showed you earlier. So I clip to the uh, jumper that went to the positive and then a jumper that went to the negative. So I think it takes like a minute or so, but at some point the power supply is gonna turn off. So now the output cut power, as you can see there, if I remove this and uh, connect it back, it will uh, turn on. Sometimes it doesn't turn on, sometimes you have to hit the button to, uh, you'll see if I hit the button, it gets, I uh, can't remember, there's the button. Um, you'll see uh, the display on there. And that's not the button, that's a USB port. Kind of look like a button. Uh, there we go. If you press the button, that uh, should turn it back on. LED turned on as well. So now, instead of just lighting the uh, 15 milliamp approximately red LED, I added this one watt LED. So we got five volts from the USB, about 200 milliamps of current right there. And this has been on for about five minutes right now. And it was turning off in about a minute with just the little red LED right there. But with 200 milliamps of current, it is keeping this on. So um, that's one way you can use these uh, power supplies. At the uh, lower currents, they'll think they're not really powering anything and they will shut off. But uh, at least with this one, 200 milliamps of current, it allows it to stay on. So now, I do have uh, USB to USB cables, but um, I couldn't find them before I found 
uh, the uh, USB to barrel plugs right there. So I got a uh, pack of those. And then I knew I had the uh, female to uh, female uh, barrel plugs right there for plugging a male in on both ends. So I just kind of jerry-rigged this uh, right there instead of searching any longer for the USB to USB. So I can plug this in. Um, this one broke a little bit. I think it's that one right there. Um, so uh, in any case, uh, we'll plug this into here. And uh, I can't remember if this is on or off. If the LED turns on, then uh, this sh should be turned on this uh, portable, there we go, the uh, breadboard power supply. So it didn't turn on, pretty sure it's off. We will hit uh, the button and there you can see that uh, got it to uh, turn on. So I had to turn the breadboard power supply on. Uh, so be aware of that. If it's not powering up, maybe the button is turned off. So now I waited about a minute and it turned off. So I'm gonna leave the power button the same and uh, plug it back in and we should see that it turns on. And you can also turn it off, turn it on like that. But in any case, we got about a minute of power. Maybe that's not as long as you want for whatever reason at these low currents. And uh, therefore, again, you can take the LED since both rails are powered right there. I will plug that in and uh, we'll come back in at least like two or three minutes. So now, um, it's been over five minutes right there and this stayed uh, powering everything. So it's about 200 milliamps of current. Even if I got rid of the red LED, it's about 15 milliamps of current. I don't think it makes uh, any difference right there. Um, you know, technically I should have tested without that one. Maybe the red LED uh, got us over that crossing line, but I don't think so. I think 200 milliamps was uh, plenty enough to uh, keep it on. I don't know what the minimum would be. Now, we don't have to leave that LED on all the time. We could switch it with the transistor i wouldn't use the 555 directly but you could have like a 555 or other timer turn it on for a brief period of time and then off you know switch your transistor on and off with this as the load um just however long you need in order to keep this from uh shutting off going into sleep mode or whatever and um in any case um yeah that's really about it a lot of people are interested in uh the power coming to the uh, USB for some reason. I never really think about it. As I showed before, I just have the USB to alligator clips and stuff, which I think works better. Um, but uh, any case, this is uh, the five volts that we're getting at the output. Uh, I think, um, I think did we get three right there? 3.3, 3. yeah, that's not as bright. If I go there, it's brighter than if I go over here. So yeah, it looks like you actually get 3.3 .3 volts out right there. So I plugged the headers into uh, the board right there and um, I'll try to touch uh, both header pins at the same time right there and we can measure uh, the voltage. So yeah, we actually get 3.3 .3 volts out there. I didn't uh, think we would. I thought this uh, uh, came right to the output right there, but we can actually get the regulator to uh, give us a lower voltage. And that is uh, really hot. I uh, just barely touched it and uh, uh, turned on briefly because I had a slight connection. Now that I put it back in the five volt spot, it's actually lower, um, as you can see right there, which is kind of interesting. Maybe there's a little uh, more resistance along the way. So I'm going to pluck this really quick and see what uh, voltage we get without the load. We got about five volts right there. So I'm surprised we had uh, that much drop. Um, but uh, any case, again, people are interested in that uh, USB as a uh, the input of the supply so I have no more uh, information than what I just showed you really um, with that so hope you found it interesting thanks for watching make sure you check out one of the other videos I'm posting on the screen and check out links down below they all help out a lot I'll see you in the next video